Hey folks, welcome to another video. This one, hopefully, rather quick, but it's it's a tale of a good amount of time that I wasted, so I felt like documenting it for me to remember and not waste time again, and hopefully for someone which who is facing similar issues. So, in the gist, I was building an API uh, using controllers, so old school by now, with minimal APIs, but still we're using controllers, building an API, and I want to have a type, which is like a complex type, to be treated as a simple type. And you can see that type in the screen right now. So it's basically a wrapper type around the, uh, just a valley. And you might ask, what's this for? So I won't go into the details, but it's basically to avoid what's usually called primitive obsession. So in this case, you can see that it's it's just for demos. It's a sum wrapper type, but you can think of it of it, for example, in terms of uh, strongly typed IDs. As let me show you, uh, Andrew Locke already blogged about it, and not only for strongly typed IDs, although it's what he focused on. But for example, there's this uh, one by Jimmy Bogart, and this one by okay, no thanks. Okay, uh, and this one by Vladimir Korikov uh, about primitive obsession. So, but I won't go into details because you can read all of this and I'll drop links. But just to say that instead of treating everything as primitive types like strings, integers, GUIDs and stuff like that, we should try to model uh, things with specific types, uh, not only for type safety, but also to just avoid um, spreading logic in multiple places, we can centralize logic. In this specific case, let me go back here. In this specific case, it was just for the type safety. Uh, I just, instead of passing around, in this case, an integer, I just wanted to pass around this type, like an abstraction, so encapsulate that detail so that uh, across the application I just use this and then in the specific places where I actually need the internal value then I use it so in my case it was an abstraction but it is much more powerful than this and this is actually what we should do with object-oriented programming instead of just using strings and ints everywhere so that's the reason why I wanted to to use this but I don't want, because this is a complex type, even though it's just a wrapper, uh, when, when building the API, I don't want to pass the values like a complete object with just one thing in there. Uh, so let's start by this. So we have this, um, this object, as you can see, is very simple. It's a record struct. Uh, it has a sing sim single value, an integer. It has a try parse method just to make it easy to pass, parse a string into this object. And that's it, nothing else. And then I want to get this from the API. So I have a controller and as you can see, I just have the, the method without anything else. And I get some wrapper type and then okay, stuff like that. So I was already expecting this wouldn't work as I want uh, because for all intents and purposes, this is a complex type, so it will be uh, thought as it is. Although, not exactly, it didn't happen exactly how I expected, but let's see that. So, we have this, and keep in mind, this is very basic, we get this, and it's a, a get. So, this is important to remember. Now, if I look into the swagger, we have over here, and as you can see, this, at least for me, it was unexpected. Because it's a get, I would expect it to magically try to shove this value into the query string, but apparently not, it's in the body. So this won't work. Not only is the documentation not as well you expect, but yeah, this won't work here. Uh, because, well, we can't pass things in a, in a get request in the body. So. This was the first problem, but this one I was already expecting that I did needed to do something specific, not because of 
putting things in the body, but to abstract the the detail that there is a value inside the the wrapper type. So this was kind of unexpected. So because I did this in the past and it worked, although at that point I used from route and uh, model binder, so I assumed it would work uh, the same. Apparently not, but let's see. I just went ahead and create a model binder. So I won't bore you with details, but it's a common way to implement model binding in ESP.NET uh, since before core, but in core as well. And besides all of this um, boilerplate, the important part is here where we finally check the model type if it matches our expected type and then try to parse it uh, the value that we got from from ASP.NET and we are using that try parse method that we have in the sum wrapper type if it succeeds we we return it otherwise it fails so with this type in hand and the corresponding provider factor binder factory or provider we can configure it in ASP.NET Core, which is done like this. And I can restart everything. Should be done. Yep. And as we can see, nothing changes. Now, this makes sense because the model binder is some just in execution time, it uses it to model bind things. So it doesn't change anything in the Swagger because uh, it doesn't affect the documentation. So even if it works, it doesn't show in the Swagger. So it's still not enough. So not being enough, the next thing I remember to try was, because I already did it in the past as well, was I thought maybe this is just lacking on the documentation side and and it it's good in the API implementation. So I thought let's try to go to over here in the configuration as well, go down a bit and use this. So when we are using uh, configuring in this case swashbuckle, which is what I'm using, we can map these things as you can see over here in the bottom. We have the that type because it's it's inferring it and putting in the schemas. But because we want to make it act like a simple type, we don't really want it here. So one way to do that is over here, configuring swashbuckle, we map a type, some wrapper type, and say that it matches a string in this case. We could also use an int, but I really want to abstract what's in, the, in there and like the more uh, abstract way is the string because everything can be put into the string I guess so I did it like this so if we go back here and refresh mm, did I no, I didn't refresh let's refresh this how about now okay so schemas are gone so the type is no longer treated as a complex type but it's still not good so it still thinks that it should be on the on the body so still not good not where what we want to do so back here what can we do so I thought let's put it in the query and so I created this this change which is basically everything the same the only difference is I'm using the from query attribute so restarting this again and let's see what happens so now we have the two operations and it's no longer on the body it's in the, the, the query but notice that instead of being called or the other way instead of being called wrapper as it should it's called value and it's an integer 
So it's basically ignoring that we want to get it as a string. Um, and it's going and basically assuming the, the value, which as you know, it's called value. So it's getting this. So if we had more properties, all of those would appear there. So it's, the problem is I did some changes, some, some configurations to the Swagger and some configurations to the API implementation, and they are not yet seeing themselves together working as expected. Okay, so at this point, I was like, I have no more ideas. I'm a bit lost here. I don't know. I got into rabbit holes, trying weird model binding stuff that didn't work. So then I remember to go back to Andrew Locke's posts because for sure he had faced this and yes, it, he did over here. And at some point he talks about uh, type converters. So type converters is uh, something we can inherit from a class called type converter as you see here and say the kinds of conversions we can do like the source type and we can actually convert to and from and stuff like that and we actually want to parse we actually want to convert from string to 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 this this type and as i noticed when reading this post which i should have done from the beginning it actually we actually don't need model binding or better yet, that will work as model binding itself. We don't need this part. So I can just go here and comment everything. Go to the program and comment this part. Uh, let me just stop and go back here and I will comment this and do a slightly different take, which is the same type. I just added a type converter as an internal class. So I'm doing the same thing. So this is basically doing the same as the model binder, but with a little less boilerplate. So I can convert source type string, yes, or go to base. And then when converting, get the value as a string, use our try parse method, otherwise return base. This probably won't work any anyway but let's just keep it here but yeah it's as you can see this is less these were 56 lines this is more because i have an entire entire class over here but less boilerplate so with this change we can try again Go back to the swagger and now it works and you can see i'm using the basic instead of the from query so we don't even need to put the attribute because it just detects that there is this conversion and ignores everything so now it works and if i put an integer here it works and returns it finally so now we finally have it well implemented in the API side and well documented on Swagger. Even with this change, we still need the um, we still need this map type over here in the program. If I comment this map type, what happens is the implementation in the ASP.NET Core is correct, so it will work the API, but the Swagger won't know won't be well documented. This will still appear here. And it's in the query, but an object here. But if we send the thing, it works. As you can see, it's just not well documented. So if we go back here and get this back. Refresh, and now it's cool. And works the same over here. One final note, in, in case you're wondering, how would we do this in minimal APIs? 
So in minimal APIs, this would basically just work because minimal APIs have a convention to use. There are a couple of methods which are there by convention. They can use try parse with this signature or a similar one or another one called bind async. I also will leave a link below. Uh, and it will use this method and parse, so it will just work. So if I restart this, and now in the minimal, you can see it's the same, and it's even required. It assumes because it's not nullable, so assumes it's required, and it should work. Yeah. So and if just in case you want full confirmation. If I go here, comment this part, and then comment this one. Let's restart. So if I go here, it's broken, back in the body and stuff like that. But over here, it's in the query parameter, so it and it works. So minimal APIs solve this. They have. I found other problems when trying to use Swagger with minimal APIs. This wasn't one of them. This just worked and it was great. And that's it for this video. I hope I was fast enough uh, just to explain this. Uh, again, it, I spent a lot of hours, not a complete day, but close to a complete day trying to just do this, which might seem simple, but uh, it was <laughs> I didn't know how to do this. Never heard of the, or, or better yet, I've heard because I've read the post from Andrew Locke, but I didn't remember about it. Uh, so, but then when I finally remember to try again looking at it, yeah, it's here. It see it's better, it's less boilerplate, but it's one of those things, if you know, you know, if you don't know, you're lost. And that was my case, I was lost. So hopefully this video and the post that I will uh, link as well will be helpful uh, for anyone who faces these kinds of issues and also to raise awareness that you should be not for every type but when makes sense don't just use strings and ints everywhere like wrap them make things type safe and encapsulate logic stuff like that okay uh, hope you enjoyed it hope it was useful and hope to see you in the next one see yes Hey, one last thing before you go. If this or any other of my videos was helpful, consider dropping a like, a comment, a subscribe, sharing, and any other of those things that help a channel grow. It would be super helpful. Thanks for watching. See yes.